What's up everybody and welcome to a video with the Georgia Assassin. You know it's getting real close to trap line time, at least for me anyways. I know some of you are already out there, probably been out there for a couple weeks, but it's almost time for me to go. So I got out my trap line bucket today and I was thinking to myself, I haven't made a video on my favorite baits for trap lining. That's right. I, the trap line king, have not made a video on my favorite baits. So today, that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna run through my favorite trap line baits, the seasons, when I use them, why I use them, and what you can expect to catch. Let's go. I sure got my recorder on it today. All right, so um, I guess what I would like to say is that this time of the year, so right now it's the beginning of April, uh, it's actually spring break. Most of you guys are probably out having some beach trips and all that good stuff, but I'm not here. Um, I did. I am off next week. Hopefully, gonna go do some trout lining. Gonna take my boat out for the first time. That's right. It's been two months, a little over two months, or right at two months, and I'm yet to take it out just to give everybody an update on the boat. Um, I did go ahead and install a Minn Kota iPilot uh, power drive trailer motor and my um, my uh, I got a low rance fish finder, triple shot transducer. So it's all installed, ready to go. Just got back from getting my boat ramp pass for the year and uh, looking forward to going. So anyways, today I went out there and I, I grabbed my trout line bucket and I sharpened my hooks like I do every year, checking out all my main lines, making sure everything's ready to go. Um, you know, and I, it just kind of just, I thought about it, you know. Why haven't I made a video? So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of the things that people use um what works this is all in my experience everybody's going to have different experiences different water different everything so this is all from my perspective if y'all want to chop me up in the comments about anything feel free to um all comments are appreciated good or bad all right so the first thing we're going to talk about is um the different types of baits you can use i would classify one as like your grocery store baits and then you've got your uh fresh baits alive or dead ones that you go buy from the bait shop and then you've got your uh, manufactured baits. Now this is all gonna vary based on the time of the year because everything changes as time moves. This time of the year, the water is starting to heat up. Uh, around here, the lake's finally getting almost full. So those fish are able to get out there and kind of start hunting again. Um, they're probably still semi-starving from the long uh, winter. So this time of the year, which is April, early season for Georgia, I live in Cherokee County. so. Around here, it depends on what you want to catch. Um, so there's a lot of variables that you've got to consider. Um, what I would think about is if you're if you're wanting to go catch a ton of fish, um, you cannot beat um, fresh minnows, river minnows, live or dead, but fresh, threadfin shad, gizzard shad, anything like that. Any of those any of those baits are going to produce some serious numbers assuming that you put um, your lines in the right spot this time of the year i have some spots that i've been using year over year i like to focus on um where trees are at the edge of the bank the specifically pine trees is one that i'm picturing where the roots grow down deep and they're undercut so i try to remember those spots as i'm out uh, late year and i'll come back to those and trout lining them this time of the year so this time of the year what you can expect with Fresh bait, alive or dead, let's go. So fresh baits, alive or dead, you're gonna catch channel cats, you're gonna catch blue cats, and you're gonna catch flatheads. That's just the way, that's just what it is. Now, you, out of the three, you, fresh, live or dead, you got grocery store baits and you got manufactured baits. Fresh, live or dead is gonna outperform in every single situation, uh, especially now. I mean, you're gonna fill the majority of your hooks if you put them in the right spot. Um, it doesn't so much matter what it is, the big river minnows, pop the heads on them, pop them on and you're going to catch them, regular minnows, but then here comes your problem. So, um, what if your bait shop doesn't have it? Um, what if you can't cast net them? So I always have a fallback with whether it be, it's going to be one or the other, it's going to be a manufactured or a grocery store bait. Um, so with, um, Typically what I'll do is if I go out early to set my lines, I'll, I won't be able to go buy the bait store. 
I always bring my cast net. First thing I do when I put in the water is I go cast net under the bridge um, for minnow shad. I use a minnow net. I don't take my shad net because I'm anxious to catch anything. So 10 to 15 casts, if I catch some, great. If I don't and I didn't go to the bait store, the number one bait that I always take with me, grocery store bait, always take with me is chicken breast. Is our number two chicken breast. There's a ton of videos on YouTube about chicken breast. I've been using chicken breast for years and years and years and years and years. A lot of people like to overplay what you need to do in order to get a, I guess what they're shooting for is a different kind of video. Doesn't take all that. Chicken breast is phenomenal any time of year if you want to put fish on your lines. That's all there is to it. And another thing to consider, why chicken breast is going to be a good option for you, is it's cheap. So the reason why I started using it years ago is I buy a lot of chicken. I buy the uh, chicken breast with the rib meat. So as I'm cooking throughout the year, I'll trim the rib meat off, the fat off, all that good stuff, and I'll just throw it in a freezer bag and I'll save it. That's why I've always got it. So every once that bag gets full, I move on to another one and I just keep all this crap in my freezer door. So when I go fishing, I'll throw a bag in my trout line bucket as a just in case, and then um, if I don't catch shad or minnows, or if I don't go buy them, um, then I have something to fall back on. Because see, keep in mind, trout lining is, is expensive when you're talking about baits. I mean, most uh, lines have between 10 to 25 hooks, and um, that's, that's a lot of bait. You're going to go through a lot. So chicken is a very, very, very good option to fill that void for cheap, especially if you use your cutoffs. Now, I'm not saying you can do this only with chicken. You can do it with your pork. You can do it with whatever you cook throughout the year that you want to save scraps off of. But chicken will produce. I've caught bullhead, flathead, adolescent, really young, small little flatheads, you know, the small youthful guys. And then I've caught, um, I've even caught hybrid. Yeah, that's right, I caught hybrid in the river. Now there's no need to go crazy with what you put on it. I understand it makes it a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun to do more stuff with your bait, to, to give it, but it's really not that hard. You don't gotta put red Kool-Aid on your chicken to make it catch fish. You don't. The one thing that I do like to do is I like to put some diced or minced garlic, not the, not seasoning garlic, but actual garlic in the little bitty containers, put a scoop in the bag, put it in my fridge, and let it kind of saturate overnight and thaw out, if you will. So that, that works really well. It's my number one go-to bait. If I cannot get fresh, um, uh, if I can't get fresh shad or minnows, period. Um, now moving on. I would, I would resort to those two pretty much all year long until the water gets really hot. When the water gets hot, um, it's about time to start, stop trout lining anyways. Um, you can move on to the manufactured baits. I definitely would not recommend soap. I just would not. It sucks to try to use. There's videos of people using ivory soap and all this stuff on there. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. It's, it's a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of investment to go out there and put these lines in the water. Do not use soap. It cracks, it's garbage. If you catch anything, they're gonna be real little bitty, teeny tiny fish. You know, the ones that you can't even fillet, they're pan fryers, if you will. Um, and just it's just not worth it. So not soap, um, no. Uh, my company, Georgia Made Specialty Baits. Yes, we recently changed the name from Georgia Made Catfish Bait to Georgia Made Specialty Baits because we started uh, making saltwater baits. So I've got a bait that we sell called Whisker Lure. It is a very good, robust bait. I'm gonna plug this in here right now, Whisker Lure. Um, it's available on my website right now. Um, it's really good, I, re I recommend using it and I'll use it myself. And I have used it myself many times when the water gets hot. Um, if you're gonna you do long soak fishing, can't be beat. If you put them in in the, in the afternoon and you plan on letting them sit you know, over the night till the next day or you put them in midday one day and you're not coming back to the next day, really good bait. Turtles aren't gonna touch it. That's the problem you'll have with like your grocery store baits, like your liver. I mean, every time I've ever used liver on trout lines and pantyhose, nothing but soft shell turtles. Hate catching them. So for me personally, it don't work. So your number one bait, hands down, is going to be fresh, alive, or dead, period. I know what a lot of you are thinking, well, I use shrimp. Shrimp works good for me. Well, that's great. Keep using shrimp. Shrimp does work. But we're talking, if you want to catch the biggest fish, that you can catch big old flatheads, big old, big old blue cats. You're gonna to wanna to use fresh, live or dead, preferably gizzard chads, you know, the bigger the bait. 
Um, sometimes it helps you catch the bigger fish, sometimes it don't. Um, but yeah, those of you who are out there overcomplicating it, don't. It's, it's really not, not that bad. Um, so number one bait, fresh cut, live or dead, period, is gonna outperform everything else. The next bait that I'm gonna say you should highly consider is chicken breast, cut off whole. If you wanna buy a big pack of it, chop it up into chunks that fit on your hook, that's great. If you wanna fuck around with it and put Kool-Aid and all that stuff on there, you can do it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. It'll work. I like to put garlic on it. You don't have to. I've never dyed a single one red or purple or pink or anything. Don't think it makes a difference. It is muscle. A muscle is full of amino acids. Catfish love amino acids that will come after them. They can sense them, taste them, smell them in the water, however you want to put it, through their olfactory system, and they're going to they're gonna come after it. That's just all there is to it. That's not overcomplicate things, people. I watch all these videos that people put out on this stuff. All of them. And if you want to, so be it. I just don't. I'm not knocking anybody for anything that they do because this, this is about fun. You know, whatever you got to do to make it fun. If spending an extra 10 minutes messing with stuff in your kitchen makes makes it more fun for you, so be it. Um, but trout lining is expensive. Um, it's a lot of work. It's not easy. And nine times out of 10, if you're going to run the trout lines, you're going to need to, you know, to eat the fish, period. Because, I mean, that's what trout lines are for. Is, I mean, it's primarily commercial type fishermen. I mean, if you're out just running trout lines for the fun of it, you know, I guess you could do it, but it tears the fish all to hell, especially if you leave them overnight. If you catch a good one, it's a hell of a fighter, it's gonna tear them up. But yeah, I think that's all I, I've got for you. I went into this completely unscripted. Um, no intentions on, or no, no plan, no plan whatsoever. Um, so to summarize, don't use worms. Worms are going to be garbage. Everything in the lake bites worms. You you might catch a few fish, but they're going to be, you're going to come back to mostly empty hooks. Um, if you get a chance to go buy minnows, they're expensive, you know. Especially, I mean, I like to run what I can legally run, which is 50 hooks. So it adds up, especially running for two or three days. If you're going to land, you might as well run them twice. You know, it's a heck of a lot easier to rebate. It just depends on your schedule. But I figure some of you would like to know this info. I get a lot of questions about trout lines. Still to this day, my number one viewed video almost all the time consistently is on um, the top four ways to lay a trout line and then how to make um, bank folds. Um, so if, if you guys like this video at all, leave in the com comments, hit that thumbs up. I'll do some more videos because they're, they're all situational. Just like your your baits with the trout line. Trout lines are superb to run from now all the way until I'd say around June. And then you're gonna have to start the transition. Once the water heats up, thermocline sets in, you're gonna have to move on to your bush hooks, your your limb lines, your jug lines. You know, there's a lot more to it. Some of you think maybe think it's just a different kind of tactic to use for fun. And while these things would work early season as well, there's a time where you're gonna to have to implement these if you're gonna to continue to set line fish. And we can get into the reasons why uh, more in depth into that. I'm gonna give you a little piece of bonus information um, as far as your uh, trout line base. So let's talk about brim. Um, we covered shad and, and minnows thoroughly. So let's talk about brim. So every time I've ever went out and caught brim, which is a blast, um, I never caught anything with cut brim on the trout line, ever. Except for maybe a turtle. And here's my opinion on that. So brim are, they are fighters. They are fun to catch. They're easy to keep alive. And um, if you, you'll see later on in the summer, I'll put up a few cards of some videos that we've made, me and my buddies, um, late, late line bank pole and, and stuff like that. So the beauty of the brim is you put them on a limb line and you drop them in the water, they're gonna fight, they're gonna flutter, they're gonna kick. They're not gonna put out the same scent like a freshly cut bloody gizzard shad, oily shad, stuff like that. They, I don't know what it is about them. They just don't, they just don't pull, it, pull in fish like that. I, I personally believe it's the movement with brim. So if you go out and catch a whole bunch of brim and you cut them up and put them on your lines, I'm not saying you're not gonna catch fish. You might catch a gar for sure, but you're not gonna have the same success rate, I believe, is what you would have if you used chicken breast or fresh um, live cut or dead, period. No, they can't be beat on your line if you're fishing in the river. 
um, on a big hook with a big hook they can't be beat if you're limb lining they're king because they're going to kick and they're going to flail i personally like to drop them at a certain depth where they can where they're kind of at the top of the water so they're constantly making a noise fluttering excuse me trying to swim away and things like that so uh if you want to use brim use them um like i said this is all my opinion i would never use cut brim on a trout line put them on there live if you want to that'd probably work a hell of a lot better hell of a lot better but if you if you're catching brim and you cut them up it's just not going to produce like chicken shad or minnows will um and like i said manufactured baits i wouldn't recommend any of them unless you were going to use uh, my product the whisker lure just because it's been tested it'll sit underwater for about 12 hours um before it really starts to dissolve good i mean it starts dissolving at first at first dip but it's going to be on there a long time and it won't catch turtles so it's something that you could use situation dependent you know if you went out to run your lines earlier like midday and you can't go back till the next day it's a good one to run you know if you're going to do that because you're not going to fill up with turtles so um but anyhow that's my two cents just a quick video for you guys kind of give you an update boat's ready to rock it won't be another three or four days i'm gonna take it out those of you who like watching my trout line videos that is my intention i'm gonna go out and start the break-in period on the boat i'm gonna give it a good two hour ride the first day that i take it out i'm gonna set the lines and then um we'll spend a couple days running them hopefully get some good content for you um and we'll go from there you know there's just not been nothing to do you know it's been dead that time of the year but um things are about to get better here so stay with me well thanks for watching everybody it's been a blast i've had fun making this video like i said it's spread of the moment came down here in my garage and uh you know got my pretty boat as my uh backscape here what i could get of it hope the lightning is not too terrible agree or disagree on anything definitely leave it in the comments um, give it a thumbs up if you like the video want to see more videos like it want to see more videos of me trout lining or want to see my upcoming videos of trout lining make sure to uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of those videos they're going to be great going to be running bunches of cameras this year i usually run at least two going to try to run three plus every um, trip this year um, so yeah i'm going to finish out the day getting my trout lines ready i check every hook sharpen every hook if they got any birds i check everything so i'm gonna spend the rest of my day doing that and then uh yeah get ready to go to work tomorrow well thanks for watching i really appreciate you being here if you like the video if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber go ahead and subscribe turn on that notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos i'll see you on the next one